To help understand the properties of limits, we're going to consider this sequence. One, one-half, one-third, one-fourth, etc. This is called the harmonic sequence. And we can name the terms a sub 1, a sub 2, and so on according to the usual convention. And we, when we do that, it's very easy to make up a, an expression that describes the general term. a sub n equals 1 over n. Now, to study the behavior of this sequence, let's graph it. We'll put n on the x-axis, and we'll put a sub n on the y-axis, and then we'll plot a point for each term in the sequence. And we can see a kind of a trend. And we call this trend approaching zero. We would say a sub n, the sequence, approaches zero. Or we would say a sub n has a limit. Or we would say the limit of a sub n is zero. Um, what do we mean by this? We don't just simply mean that these numbers are getting closer and closer to zero, because they're also getting closer and closer to negative one. We mean something more specific, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the mathematical way of expressing this statement of this behavior is the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is zero. And there's mathematical notation for writing that. You put the n and an arrow in the infinity, you put it under the LIM. Now what specifically does this limit statement mean? It means not only are these points getting closer and closer to zero, but they're getting arbitrarily close to zero. So you imagine that there's an envelope. Let's draw a little orange envelope that ha contains values surrounding zero. And the, what we mean when we say arbitrarily close to zero is that we can make this envelope arbitrarily small. We could say no matter how small this envelope is, there's going to be a place where these points eventually descend into the envelope. And since we can make the envelope arbitrarily small and still determine that we descend into the envelope somewhere, we can say that these points, the value, the y values, get arbitrarily close to zero. Now, let me have you study a few other sequences. Let me give you a general term, uh, a n, b n, and c n, for three different sequences. And I would like you to study these to uh, understand some of the different behaviors. Um, I'll start off the first one for you. So just use your calculator and compute the values and fill in this table. I want you to pause the video now and get out your calculator and, and try to fill in this entire table and then when you're done start the video again. Alright, now most of this table you can fill out just with the help of your calculator or reasoning. But this final row infinity, where you seem to be asked for a sub infinity. How did you fill that out? I think you probably looked at the, the trend in each of the columns. So the first column, the numbers seem to be converging upon the number three halves. And in the second column, the numbers seem to be growing without bounds. So we would say they diverge, and you might put the infinity symbol in that column. In the third column, the numbers seem to be getting smaller and smaller, so you might say this one converges to zero. But these numbers do not represent some term a sub infinity. Don't say uh, a sub infinity is equal to three halves, because that's not the standard way of writing it and people will laugh at you. And instead, you should use the correct mathematical notation, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals three halves. The limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n equals does not exist. I know that's a little awkward grammatically, but that's the way people say it. You could also say the limit of bn is equal to infinity. That means the same thing, but it's more specific. And you could say the limit as n approaches infinity of cn equals zero. Now, you may have seen things like this before, and you may have a good intuitive understanding of what it means for a sequence to have a limiting value. Uh, I want you to have a more precise mathematical idea about it. And by the way, we have used s infinite sequences 
uh, in the past, maybe you didn't notice it. When you talked about infinite repeating decimals, you were actually talking about a calculus concept without knowing it. It's a limit of an infinite sequence. Here's the sequence. S1 is 0.9. S2 is 0.99, S3 is 0.999, S4 is 0.9999, and so on. And when we say the limit as n approaches infinity of S sub n equals 1, what we mean is, the, what we usually write, the shorthand notation, 0.9 repeating equals 1. So this statement that you're familiar with from earlier grades is really a shorthand notation for a calculus concept. And you have basically taken it on faith all these years. Now it's time to prove it. So let's see how we will prove that this sequence uh, really has a limiting value of 1. Here's the graph of our sequence S sub n. Now, in the other case, we were able to write the general term for the sequence. So let's stop and think about how you'd write the general term for S sub n. First of all, here are the other values. Um, it's not so clear just looking at those how you would write S sub n, but if you rewrite each one, S sub 1 is 1 minus 0.1, S sub 2 is 1 minus 0 0.01, and so on, then you might more quickly come up with a pattern and see how you could write S sub n. S sub n could be written as 1 minus 10 to the negative n. So now we have, uh, we've defined the sequence uh, mathematically very clearly. Now we can see from the graph that our sequence appears to have a limiting value L. So we could say the limit as n approaches infinity of S sub n is equal to L, some number L. Our job now is to prove that L equals 1. What does it mean to prove that L equals 1? It means to prove that S sub n becomes arbitrarily close to 1. What does it mean to be arbitrarily close to 1? It means that if you had an arbitrarily small envelope around 1, let's say the envelope has a width epsilon. This number, this letter here is the Greek letter epsilon. It represents some tiny little width of, of this envelope. So uh, you're claiming that at some point the sequence will rise inside of the envelope, that is, the values will be t between L minus epsilon and L, and it'll stay there forever. No matter how small epsilon is, there will be a place where the sequence stays there forever. So it's sort of like a conversation. Two people are talking about this sequence that you see graphed, and the first person says very smugly, the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n equals 1. This I know. But the second person is more skeptical, and he says, you really believe that s n gets arbitrarily close to 1? Arbitrarily close? Yes, he agrees, arbitrarily. So the second person challenges him. He says, so can s sub n get within 0 0.0387 of 1? He picks some very small number, 0 0.0387. And that number is the width of, of this envelope here. He says, if I pick this number for epsilon, are you telling me that the sequence really gets within that number of 1? And the first guy says, sure. If epsilon equals 0 0.0387, then set n equal to 2. So this is epsilon. He says if epsilon is set to 0 0.0387, then he sets the number capital N to 2. And he says for all little n greater than or equal to capital N, in other words, everywhere here and to the right of it, a sub n, the y-coordinate of these points, would be within epsilon of 1. So he met the challenge. He found a value of capital N that satisfies the condition that everywhere there and to the right of it, the sequence goes inside the envelope. And I've started making a table. He was challenged with the value 0 
and he gave as a response capital N equals 2. But then the second guy starts to feel that you know, maybe he needs to make a tougher challenge. So he says, hmm, what if epsilon equals 0 0.000296? As you can see, that's a much smaller envelope. Now we've shaded that envelope in, and our new value of epsilon is much smaller. Can the first guy meet that challenge? And the answer is, yeah, he meets it by saying, suppose n equals 4. Everywhere to the right of 4, we're within that envelope. Okay, now our second guy continues to try to think of challenges, and this goes on and on, and eventually they get this uh, table of values. Every time Mr. Big Nose thinks of a value of epsilon, Mr. Longface is able to come up with a value of n for that value of epsilon. So Big Nose is thinking, how is he doing it? And eventually, if I get a small enough epsilon, will he fail, or does he have a system that will always, always work? If only I could read his mind and see what he's thinking. And what he's really thinking is, I'm counting the leading zeros. 1, 2, n equals 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, n equals 4, and so on. And this is a system that will always work. Can you come up with an algebraic expression that lets you write n as a function of epsilon? Pause the video for a little while now and see if you can write n as a function of epsilon. Here's one way of writing n as a function of epsilon. n of epsilon equals negative floor of log of epsilon. And this is the common log, the logarithm base 10. Okay, stop and figure out why that works if you don't understand it. So Mr. Big Nose now sees that he's got a system, and that means every value of epsilon I pick, he's going to be able to come back with an n. And he says, okay, now I believe you. For any epsilon, no matter how small, there is an n, and that proves that the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n is equal to 1. That's the idea of what a limit really means. The statement limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n equals 1 means for any positive epsilon, no matter how small, there exists a value of n such that the distance between s sub n and 1 is smaller than epsilon whenever little n is greater than or equal to big N. So that means everywhere to the right of some particular number, we will be within the envelope. No matter how small an epsilon you pick, no matter how small an envelope you pick, there will always be a place where the sequence goes inside the envelope and stays there forever. And that's the first idea of the definition of a limit. Now we're going to be concerned with limits of functions of a real variable, so the next thing we have to talk about is neighborhoods and deltas, and that will be in a future lesson.